when people say to you, oh, it's just a phase, they don't understand that, well, it might be a phase, but this phase can last several years. It can last a lifetime. My first diagnosis of clinical depression was at the age of 25. My second major relapse with depression was at the age of 33. I smoke about a pack a day now. I noticed uh, it's one of those things that, you know, you just end up sitting there smoking and been smoking quite a bit. As my depression got worse, I started smoking more. On days when uh, the cloud of depression is, you know, hanging overhead from the minute you get up, it's really hard, but you know, you gotta force yourself to get up, get out of bed. You notice, you know, physical changes. You, you start sweating, you're, you start shaking, you're short of breath. I went through so many different medications that I couldn't even, you know, name them all. I use drinking as a, as a crutch and as a reward system. On my way home, I'll stop at a bar for a drink to feel better and one drink turns into three or four and that turns into, you know, eight to 12 beers. I thought it was something that would help me but, you know, those are temporary fixes that, in the long run, prolong your suffering. Uh, the happiest uh, day of my life was uh, when I got uh, married. The lowest day of my life was the day uh, my wife left me. Later that day, I was uh, going downtown. I thought that would clear my head. And I broke down at a, at a bridge. I, I just, you know, I, I stopped at the side of the bridge. I couldn't stop crying. That was my first thought of just ending my life. A cop car rolled around and a female police officer actually stepped out of the car and asked me if everything was all right. I, I told her honestly that I, didn't want to be here anymore. They took me to the hospital. Uh, that police officer probably saved my life. It's not necessarily that, you know, I was consciously thinking, I want to kill myself. I just wanted all that noise in my head, all that pain just to go away go away permanently. There are many different, you know, coping strategies and everyone will use different coping mechanisms. Myself, I found that through art, I can relax a bit. I also love skateboarding, building different skateboards, taking them apart, putting them back together, trying out different things, seeing what works, what doesn't just experimenting around with it. It is like I am in my own little world. It gives me something to focus on instead of, you know, letting the mind wander. I just promised myself I cannot put my family through this anymore. Watching what it did to them just really opened my eyes and showed me that I really needed to get help. I found myself isolating myself from friends, family, co-workers, the world in general. I just didn't want to see people at all. But once you start, you know, focusing on what is going on right now, what is going on in this moment, that's when you can, you know, kind of take yourself away from that cloud of depression and say, okay, I'm doing okay right now. I'm just at work. Well, I think some of the good days are genuinely good days. Some of them might be, you know, not such great days, but they are better than your bad days. And I guess anything better than the bad days is worth 
holding on to. The days that are good are special in the way that, at least for me, they do give me that glimmer of hope. And it also reminds me that yes, that, you know, I can lead a normal life. It, it's a matter of having more good days than bad days. And slowly I'm having more good days. It's very important to remember those days that, you know, those days will come again. And the more often those days happen, the better. I can definitely say I'm hopeful for the future. There is a light at the end of the tunnel.